Yay, look at this, England shirts. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Dave Crane. I don't wear this shirt very often, I'll tell you why, and I'm a massive, massive England football supporter. Uh, and uh, whenever I put this on, it makes me feel a bit like Coco the Clown, or, or Ronald McDonald or something, because every time that I've worn this shirt, or any England shirt, I normally go along to a restaurant or a bar, and I watch England playing, and uh, a lot of my friends are not from England, but we all share one thing in common, that's an overwhelming knowledge that they'll end up going, oh, don't worry, Dave, it's, it's only a bit of fun, and laughing at the end of the game. Now, last night, or this morning, for UAE time, I stayed up to about 1, 1.30, watching England against Iceland. Now, if you don't know the result, I'm not going to spoil it for you, we lost, 2-1, um, uh, immediately. <laughs> I sat there, and I watched it from the very beginning, in fact, I could tell we were going to lose. Now, this sounds a terrible thing to say, especially for an England fan. I could tell we we're going to lose from the very first game we played against Russia and against Wales and against Slovakia and against Iceland. I'm going to share with you exactly how I know that. Now, first of all, if you're an England fan, I don't want to rub your nose in it anymore. But, I mean, as Gary Lineker tweeted yesterday, he's saying about the fact that um, here we are so determined to get out of Europe, <laughs> of the European Union. We even do the same thing with football. Well, it felt like that yesterday. Um, and our clueless players just seemed really bad. The worst bit is we had really good players. Probably the best team I've ever seen England have, apart from it's missing Beckham. But the speed, the delivery, the, the, the confidence on the ball, and then the complete cluelessness when it actually came around to delivering something. That's what I want to share with you, how to win every single battle that you fight. England could have won last night. I'm not saying I should be England manager because that's the last job I want. Let me tell you exactly how they could have won and how you can win in every single situation you take on. Is that interesting to you? Would you like to know how? Right, I'm up here in the roof, by the way, with a lovely, my lovely dog, Ash. As uh, my friend John T said, is it Hash? No, a completely different thing, Ash, because she's black. Okay, there she is, wandering around, not because I smoke my dog. <laughs> Or anything else that fits in with that. So wherever you are across the world, let me just get that cleared up. So I'm going to tell you today uh, how to win every single battle that you've, you've ever fought or will fight in the future. And, uh, and this is how I sort of plan my life. And I uh, hope it's of use to you. Now, England is just an example last night. If you're not into football, then bear with me because I'll illustrate exactly what I'm talking about in terms of football. By the way, that star there, see that star? On the England supporters t-shirt. That says that we've won a World Cup once. It was 1966. <laughs> I wasn't even born yet. So that tells you how much joy I'm going to have during my entire lifetime based on what we saw yesterday. And it looks like Dar Gareth Southgate, by the way, is, is a leading runner to take over from Roy Hodgson. Um, and uh, if you remember Gareth Southgate, lovely guy, I'm sure. Um, he missed a penalty. He's the guy who's going to take over. He missed a penalty and got us kicked out of one of the Eurovision World Cup thingies uh, ages ago. Anyway. Good luck to England, and uh, for everybody else, forget it. Iceland, you did really well. And this is how Iceland won, and how England didn't win, but they could have won. I'm gonna share exactly with you how, how it's done, so you can use this in business and relationships, and uh, also give yourself a much easier, happier life. Less stress, less grief. Would that be useful to you? I should hope so, because that makes a massive difference for whoever you are. I find that I use this technique, and some people might say it's a bit defeatist, but you know what? I end up being happy every single day. And I don't end up like everybody else going, oh no, I can't believe that happened. I know exactly what's gonna happen. It was a very special way that I get around to making that a reality for me. Okay, I'll illustrate how to win every single battle that you go into with a very simple technique. First of all, I'm gonna tell you about the best practitioner of this that I've ever come across. And this is a guy called Eric Hartman, who you might not even have heard of, but you can substitute Muhammad Ali in, in this as well. But let's choose Eric Hartman. Eric Hartman, German guy, flew for the Luftwaffe, that's the Nazis, um, or Germany, no. Um, <laughs> can't stop, it's the English shirt I'm wearing, sorry. I've got lots of friends that are German, I don't want me to sound xenophobic. Um, so he flew for the Luftwaffe during the Second World War. And during that time, he was in combat, aerial combat, an amazing 1,404 times. He actually took part in battle, so he flew that many times, he took part in battle 825 times. In those 825 times, 
he actually managed to down, I mean like down, 352 aircraft. Most of them were Soviet aircraft, but all allied, and seven of them were actually um, um, American, so you can work out the figures. Now the guy wasn't a particularly great pilot, but he did one thing that I would share with you, that's what England should have done, it's what Iceland did, and what every team that's smart should do, whether you're a part of a business team, or it's just you on your own doing your own thing. What he did was he had a system called C, decide, attack, and reverse. C, decide, attack, and reverse. Now this sounds like a bit complicated, but it's amazingly simple. I'll show you exactly how simple this is when you put your mind to it. Now he knew that whenever there was a battle going on, he was flying a so-so plane. It was a good plane, good fighter pilot plane, you know, with big guns on the front of it, machine guns and so on, but by no means was it the best plane that was out there. He also knew that what happens is a lot of people fly in formation, but he wasn't particularly, I mean, I heard, I tried to find it, but I got told before that he actually had a slight disability, so he sort of limped down one side, which made it very difficult for him to get into dogfights. He knew he, was very, he wasn't as good as other pilots at dogfights, so here's the genius part of it. Are you ready for it? <clears throat> How did he manage to get all those, those hits, those wins, down those aircraft to be the most successful, air <clears throat> excuse me, most successful pilots of all time? Hold on, let me just get a quick drink. Just come with me two seconds, bear with me. I'm just gonna go into my, uh, this is my multi-gym by the way. This is where I should be working out, but I go out on a roof, cause it's much nicer. And the weather's good. Oh, it was a bit hot, but it's summer. Cheers. Yes, I know I shouldn't be drinking outside, so I'm not, I'm going inside. Okay, so let's get back to this whole point. So he knew that if he got into a dogfight, he would lose the battle because some people are much faster, much stronger, better aircraft, and their aerial maneuverability would mean that if you're a fighter pilot, your ability to shift around with strength and upper body strength would mean that you would beat somebody who's in a, who's in a lesser plane or not as strong as you. So he didn't ever get involved in that kind of battle. What he would do was under cloud formation, he'd just observe a group of aircraft, enemy aircraft, and he'd look to see which of the, of the planes he could take out without being injured. Now get this right, he never ever ever got shot down. 14 times he crashed, but that's only because of flying debris after he'd blasted his way through a plane. Never got shot down, okay? But this is very important. So what he'd do is he'd look for a plane, whether it's a straggler or something that's weak, or he'd choose a certain type of aircraft. For instance, a lot of the big bombers only had one little uh, machine gun on the back of it, so he knew that he could actually get to them without anybody stopping him. And sometimes he'd dive in from the clouds and go back out again. Sometimes he'd go in and he'd pull away before anybody could find out it was him. He always made sure he had cloud cover, and he'd go down and he'd get really, really close to the plane, really close, and when it was no choice but to fire, he'd blast them, so close that he had to sometimes fly through the plane or the debris that was created by it in order to get away. Now that meant a couple of things. First of all, he sometimes flew through other planes to get to the one that he wanted, but he would cherry pick. Now this is the key. The way to win every single battle is only to fight the ones that you know you will win. Ah, revelation. Only fight the battles you know you'll, you'll win. Which means don't do the bravado thing of saying, come on then, let's see how good we all are. What if you lose? What if you find somebody who's better than you? What if you find somebody's tactics are smarter than yours? Or luck comes into it. He never did that. The way he became the best fighter pilot of all time was simply to choose the battles he knew he could win. He knew that if he came in with complete surprise and hit somebody, and flew out the way, he could get away. And most of his battles were just one hit wonders. He'd go in, he'd take somebody out, and he'd go. So by the time they worked out, oh, that's the guy, he'd be gone. Or maybe he'd circle around the clouds, go back in again, but he'd always make sure that he had an exit strategy. So you see, you observe what's going on. You decide the best plan of attack, then you do attack, and then you get out. 
Don't hang around. Don't wait for somebody else to come along and say, ah, I can beat you. No, because what if I do beat you? Then you've lost everything. And in the world of fighter pilots or football or anything else, then losing is everything. It's all about results. And your life is probably the same way as well. Okay, so you get a chance to, to review and change the way you do things. But at the same time, it's really, really important that you do get as many hits as possible. So let's bring it back to my England football shirt. Da -da 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 -da. And my Coco Clownness. <laughs> my Coco the Clownness that goes with it. And I'm sorry to, for Roy Hodgson um, resigning. But I'm well, not really. But anyway. So what should England have done last night to have beaten Iceland? Well, we should have taken a leaf out of Iceland's book. Iceland have nothing to lose. Massive players, physically bigger and stronger than most of England players. They play together. Eleven of them have been in the same lineup for all their games during the Euro Championships. They also know exactly where everybody's going to be and exactly how they're going to hit them. They know they're very strong in counter-attack and they know they're brilliant at creating a defence. Now they might only have one or two tricks, they've probably got a few more than that, but not that many. But they studied England and they worked out that England didn't really have a decent plan of attack. They just kept knocking in balls left, right and centre, but they couldn't finish it. So if they just stopped and frustrated England, then there's no way we were going to get a proper goal. I say we, becoming English again because I'm dressed like this. There's no way England was going to get a proper goal in normal time unless they went to penalties. And they knew that when it comes to penalties, England was like that. Way, kick it, way. Oh dear, it's gone. My career's down the toilet. So that's what we did. They worked out what England didn't do very well, they worked out what they did very well, and that's what they stuck to. Simple strategy, didn't deviate from that at all. And they got two lightning fast goals in, they realised they had to turn things around very, very quickly after the first penalty. They got one goal in to equalise, another one to, to, to make sure that uh, they were in the lead, and they just stuck with that lead. They knew they could out-defend England because they've watched Slovakia do it. They watched Wales beating, not beating England, but, but they saw the things that Wales did, and also how um, Russia were able to frustrate England until the very last bit. England might have had some really good players, some really good strikers, but they weren't playing to their strengths, which is using wings, getting the ball across, the guys like Sturridge and Vardy, who were excellent at banging it in from a very close range. That's what they do very well. Forget the long ball, the goalkeeper can stop that. But we ended up taking lots of long ball shots and looking clueless in front of the goals. So how would England have beaten Iceland? In my opinion, by the way, uh, and I'm not a, a football manager, I'm just a bloke who sits on his roof and stands on his roof before he goes to the gym and tells you lots of stuff which I think is kind of important, and you might go, oh, whatever. Right, what England should have done is very simply <laughs> got their stuff together. I don't mean stuff, I meant shh. Got their stuff together. They know very simply that Iceland will part the bus. They know they're bigger, they're stronger, not as skillful maybe, and certainly not as experienced. Your average Iceland player plays in the third, second, or maybe even first division of English football, so by no way anything as high rated. But they played as a team, and they knew exactly how they were going to get the ball in the back of the net, because they did the same thing twice. England did the non-thing at no point. They just hoped their natural skills and natural talent would win, and at that level, it didn't. I don't think there's many people who started watching that game who were surprised to find that Iceland just had a strategy that meant that they were going to beat England. And I think the battle was won even before they'd started it. They just worked out how they were going to beat them. One trick pony, pass it around, bang, 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 back of the net, get back. That's it. Now, okay, you might sit there and you're probably typing and saying, Dave, the game wasn't like that. It doesn't really matter, does it? It's only football. It's only the most important game in the world. Apart from rugby. Um, but here's the point. From now on, whenever you do something, and you can look at everything from your relationships to your business to your, um, your decisions about how you're going to do stuff in the future to buying a house, buying a car, or pitching for something, stop trying to win based on the odds of you actually managing to get through. Okay, you might be bigger and stronger than most people, but does that guarantee a win? Well, no, you're hoping that you can put it all together. Well, don't do all that. What if it doesn't work out? What if things happen that, that humiliate you or ruin that whole effect? Here's what I'm suggesting, and it's much more simple than that. Only fight the battles that you are guaranteed to win. If you're not guaranteed to win, let somebody else do it. Think of the consequences. If it all goes nasty or all goes wrong, you've only got yourself to blame. So cherry pick. Choose one thing or two things, but one thing better than anything, especially in a world of Google, where people can Google one thing, and you want to be able to dominate that in terms of SEO, and talk to my friend Ali Sudi, 
um, from me first, he'll tell you exactly how to do that properly. Um, and you want to make sure that when you do get found, you know exactly how to win every single battle. So concentrate on one thing, look at your whole business, look at your life, look at your decision making, and narrow it down to one thing that you do better than anybody else, and stick to that. Now what's coming up in football, for those interested, <laughs> those like me who are not going to watch your Euros anymore, um, but certainly in English football, you've got Jose Mourinho against Pep Guardiola, Manchester United versus Manchester City, and the interesting thing about that is Jose Mourinho is probably one of the best tactical uh, managers of all time, but so is Pep Guardiola. But Jose Mourinho does one thing, he picks his battles. He gets rid of all the things other people do, like nurturing the team and growing the youngsters and trying them out to see. Forget all that. He'll spend good money to get in the best practitioners of his system. His system is slow the game down and counter attack until you, you, you get one goal, two goals, and then defend. It's boring. It's really boring and it's really irritating. And what happens after a period of time is after the first year or second year when he wins trophies and wipes the floor of everybody, his team get disgruntled and, and don't want to play them anymore. Whether that's his ego or it's the, the, the way that they're playing or the fact that, I don't know, whatever it is, but he does one thing really well. And that is how he will end up taking Manchester United to the level that they haven't been since uh, so Alex Ferguson left. So here's that thing for you. Now Pep Guardiola, He's got a different strategy and it's going to be interesting how the two fight together. But, but Jose Mourinho is somebody who only fights the battles he knows he can win. As soon as it all went a bit south at Chelsea, he got out. That was it. Not here anymore. Thank you. Bye-bye. And he could decide who decided this. But he already knew what he was going to do. He had plans already to go to Manchester United long before everything happened. So you do the same thing. Think about the battle you know that you can win versus what you thought you were going to be working on where the odds are you might not succeed and tweak it. And maybe dump half the things you're planning, but do the thing that you know is going to work, and then do that again and again and again, and refine it until you're guaranteed to win every time. People respect you for it. Nobody respects you if you're a really gallant loser. Nobody cares. Well, nobody cares anyway. It's all about what you think. But ultimately, work on the stuff that creates more success for you, and make that part of your learning curve. And what people will pay for is the better you are at something, and the harder it is to replace you with somebody else, they'll pay you for that. They'll pay you higher and higher fees if you're the only person that can deliver a certain thing because they know they have to. That's it. It's all over now. I'm going to work out in my England shirt now. I'm going to really sweat. I'm going to find it really painful. I'm going to think if only Rooney... Let's not go there. Have a wonderful day. Leave your comments. Share this with other people as well. If you're a little bit sore about the England game, <laughs> think about England. England getting kicked out actually means that most people go, oh, I knew they were going to get kicked out at some point, but I wish it had been a bit later so you can see English people looking really, really disappointed more. So, anyway, whatever you're doing today, have a wonderful day and enjoy the football. And well done to Iceland. Whee! 330,000 people can't be wrong. And they weren't. <laughs> we were. Take it easy. Bye.